Here are examples of proprietary suppositories and their packaging. These are two traditional suppository moulds used in extemporaneous dispensing. Larger moulds, as shown here next to a typical 1 gram suppository mould, can be used to make pessaries. For convenience, plastic disposable moulds are often used in hospitals. This traditional suppository mould consists of three parts, two sides held together by a screw. Normally, letters or numbers will be etched on each part of the mould to show that they match. All parts match on this five part mould with two screw fixings. Check the mould is clean and assemble the mould, but do not over tighten the screw. It is critical that the screw is placed in the correct side, otherwise the mould will open. Turn on the heater to heat up the water bath, making sure there is enough water in the water bath. Whilst the water reaches temperature, transfer the previously weighed powder to be incorporated into the suppositories into the glass mortar. Grind the powder well using a glass pestle. This will reduce particle size until a fine powder is formed. This is very important in order to produce an elegant and effective product. Transfer the powder to a clean glass tile using a spatula. Place the previously weighed suppository base into an evaporating basin. And place the evaporating basin on the water bath. Remember to stir to assist melting and to ensure an even temperature throughout the base. Check the temperature and remove the evaporating basin from the heat. Some solid will still be present but the residual heat should ensure that it melts. Stir to assist melting of the remaining solid. A minimum amount of molten base is added to the finely ground powder already on the tile. The insoluble solid is then incorporated into the base by levigation, which is also called wet grinding. The shearing effect between the tile and the spatula will not be achieved if too much molten base is added and the resulting product will be gritty and unpleasant to use. Once all the powder has been incorporated into the base, the solidified base is scraped up from the tile and returned to the evaporating basin containing the remaining molten base. Once again, stir to help the solid mass remelt. Once the solid is remelted, continue stirring until the base is just about to solidify. This is easy to judge with experience, but as a guide, look for a slight sheen on the surface of the molten mass, rather similar to a skin forming on hot milk. In one movement, Pour the mass into the mould. Allow it to overfill slightly. When the suppositories have contracted but not completely set, trim off the excess fat using a warm spatula, either by cutting through the fat or by rubbing the flat blade of the spatula over the top of the mould. After further cooling, loosen the screw of the mould and tap sharply on the bench. Remove the suppositories carefully. Do not attempt this until the suppositories have completely set. Ideally, the suppositories should be uniform in shape and colour and have a smooth profile. These suppositories have been damaged either on removal from the mould or in manufacture. They may have been poured when the base was too close to the solidification point. The blue nose suppositories demonstrate how the insoluble medicament may not be uniformly distributed throughout the suppository.
This happens if the suppositories are poured too early when the base is not close to its solidification point. Here you can see what can happen if the molten base and insoluble medicament are not well stirred together. The white suppository was probably the first to be poured and contains no medicament. The bright blue suppository was probably the last to be poured and contains more than its share of medicament. These are obvious errors when compared with the accurately made suppository in the centre. Once removed from the mould, the suppositories need to be wrapped individually. Aluminium foil is usually used. The suppository is wrapped in a suitably sized piece of foil. This produces neatly wrapped suppositories. These are examples of poorly wrapped suppositories. Once wrapped in foil, transfer the suppositories to an amber glass jar. And label.